teacher, a hooker and a preacher, riding on a midnight bus bound for Mexico. One was headed for vacation, one for higher education, and two of them were searching for a lost soul. That driver never ever saw a stop sign. Eighteen wheelers can't stop on a dime. There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway. Why there's not four of them, heaven only knows. I guess it's not what you take when you leave this world behind you. It's what you leave behind you when you go. That farmer left a heart. A home in 80 acres The faith and love are growing things In his young son's heart And that teacher left her wisdom In the minds of lots of children Did her best to give them all a better start And that preacher whispered Can't you see the promised land As he laid his blood-stained Bible In that hooker's hand there are three wood crosses on the right side of the highway. Why there's not four of them, heaven only knows. I guess it's not what you take when you leave this world behind you. It's what you leave behind you when you go. That's a story that our preacher told last Sunday. As he held his blood-stained Bible up for all of us to see, he said, bless the farmer and the teacher and that preacher who gave this Bible to my mama who read it to me. There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway. Why, there's not four of them. Now I guess we know not what you take when you leave this world behind you it's what you leave behind you when you go there are three wooden crosses on the right side of the church this Sunday or probably the next Sunday and we'll just have to see how that goes uh, how, what the situation is by that time you know uh, several months ago when we came back to church for full time I made this statement that we would never have to close this church again well I was wrong the deacons and I made the decision to limit the services for the next two weeks based on the uh, fact that the, the virus is going up all over the country. When I made that statement that we wouldn't close the church again, the virus was going down. It was looking good for 
of our um, uh, virus uh, injection to come out pretty soon, so we were hoping for that. And back then we thought, hey, we got this thing licked. Everything's looking good. Well, as it turned out, a little thing called Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, graduations, athletic events, took a toll on the whole country. We're now higher than we've ever been. We have more deaths than we've ever had. So in light of all that, the deacons and I decided that safety should be our number one rule. Uh, especially after we had uh, two different people in our congregation that uh, possibly may be infected. We don't know yet. The test has not come back. So we decided that it would be better to be safe than sorry. So at least for the next two weeks, we won't have church. And we'll make another decision uh, before that time. In the meantime, be safe. Take care of your family. If that means keeping them home, then keep them home. If it means wearing a mask, wear a mask. It won't kill you. Not wearing a mask could kill you. When you go out, be cautious of who you're around. When you have friends and neighbors into your home, be sure to wear your mask. Be sure to take all precautions that you need to take. <clears throat> we don't know. It's not just the people that live in your house. It's the people that come into your house. <coughs> Excuse me. Most people uh, uh, contact the virus by outside people, not from your family. But it can be from your family because you don't know where they all go either. Anyway, for the next two weeks, We won't see you in church, but we'll be thinking about you, and we'll be praying for you. Let's pray right now. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, this church has been here a long time. You've watched over this church, Lord. You've kept her safe. We thank you, Father. We just ask that you continue to watch over this congregation. Continue to keep them safe. Continue to guide us as a church is what we should do. We thank you, Father, for your protection. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. December 25th. They're off to a Christmas party. I remember when he used to read Luke 2 every Christmas Eve to his family. It gave them all such joy. March 15th, spring. I just cleaned the house. He picked me up, but only to wipe away the dust. He's pretty busy thinking about how he's going to afford another child. If he only knew, I have the perfect words for him. March 20th. I got packed into a suitcase for some reason and I never got taken out. Just tucked away in the pocket. You know, the one with the net. April 14th. His father is sick and they're off to the hospital. Romans 8 could give him perspective. It could give the family hope. John 3 would be great for him to share with his dad, but... They left me here. June 8th, summer. The kids are out of school and having fun. 
They never pick me up, though, probably because he doesn't anymore. He watched them play through the window, but he was sad about something. There's so much in my psalms for him to read. August 19th. His father passed away and we're going to the funeral. I thought for sure I'd get open today, but no. Just carried along, but never opened. I wanted to help so much. October 12th. Still haven't been picked up since the funeral, and he and his wife are pretty distant from each other right now. The family is suffering. The wind did blow my pages open right in front of him, but he just glanced down and walked away. November 28th. The whole family is visiting. Everyone's sitting around the table. Somebody asked what happens after someone dies, and they all had opinions. Nobody answered with any authority. Hopelessness filled the room. He talked about something else at that point. December 25th again. There's a Christmas party tonight, and he walked right by me. Luke 2 would be such a great place to start. Anywhere would be a great place to start.